who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus talks to Alexandra, a six-sphere Pleiadian woman, through an intermediary, Anto Klobuka. And the only way to progress beyond that point is to actually involve God in your progression. And God isn't you. God's not you. God is a, God is a being who created you. And that, that has been yep. a challenge to accept that. Yep. Mm. And then it's a, the real challenge is actually not just accepting that, but, but actually entering a personal relationship with that God. And that's where many of us have, have had numerous discussions. Yes. And any amount of discussions don't enter you with a relationship with God. Have you found that? Well, <laughs> this is a conundrum. Yes. We don't understand whether it's true or not. Like, yes, we haven't been able to verify this. And you will not be able to verify it unless you do one or two primary things. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how God communicates with his children. So you and I are both God's children, yes. and it's very important if we're ever going to have a relationship with God that we learn how to communicate with God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we think about ourselves as God's child and God being God, full of love, and you've seen the evidence of this love in the universe around you. Yes. So once you see this evidence of love, you saw the evidence of love, the fact that you, although you haven't met Ammon and a man, the first human couple, Adam and Eve, you, you've heard that they arrived on earth in a sixth sphere condition, the condition you are in now, and they uh, somehow lost that condition. Yeah. And the question is, how did they lose that condition? It's an interesting question. I've been focused on the question of how to achieve the status that they were actually in. Yes, we but you've already done that. Yes. And yet you're not in the position where you're communicating with God and you're also not in the position where you've progressed beyond the sixth dimension. Okay. So were Adam and Eve communicating to God whilst they were They on? were offered the chance to, yes. Right. And they rejected it. And they rejected it because they wanted to be gods themselves. Does that sound familiar? Very familiar. <laughs> You can see that many people you meet in the sixth dimension have the same feeling, don't they? Yes. That they want to be gods themselves. They want to be the, their own, if you like, their own ruler of their own kingdom uh, and their own selves. Would you be able to explain why is that, that is the case? I mean, is it simply because we've been taught that belief system? or No, because a man and a man were not taught that belief system. So it's a belief system that you can allow to actually be, you can encourage it within yourself and eventually you can act upon that belief system and, and withdraw from God, which is what Amon and man did. But they had an offer, you said, from God. They did. And you have had an offer for the last 2,000 years available have to I? you as well, without knowing. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know how that's possible, but yes. I'd like to know. Yeah. So, so what I would like to explain first is how they lost it. How yes. they lost their, their offer, if you like, of that, receiving that love. They decided they wanted to be gods themselves. So they decided they wanted to act independently of God's laws and independently of God's love. Why would that be the case? Well, they decided that they could be God themselves. So they decided that they didn't need God, that they could become the same as God in power and glory. Yeah, and I've always wondered about that. They're made they, in the image of God. They decided to make that that effort to become gods themselves. And in the process of doing that, they rejected God's love, which would have been the only thing possible to make them progress. So what happened is they regressed. And so the fifth dimension was created, the fourth dimension was created, and within a, just a few hundred years, eventually the first dimension was created because the laws of God allow for the creation of these dimensions. I see. So the laws of God are a structure, if you like, a structure in which all of the universe, including the human soul, lives. And the laws allow for the creation of universes, depending on the condition of the individual. And if the condition of the individual regresses in love, then a lower dimension is created. And you've examined the lowest dimensions. It's been some time since you've been to the first dimension. Mm. But you've examined them. You can see the horror, even, that exists in some dimensions. And we've felt that we've been a part of that. that as mankind, humanity, we've created that. Yes, and, and that is true, we have, but 
But if we look at it truthfully, we can see that actually we didn't need to. We decided to do it because we wanted to become gods. In other words, we wanted to be our own rulers of ourselves and we wanted to ignore all of God's laws and all of God's principles of love. Mm. And this is the main reason why we created those darker dimensions. Does that make sense? Yes. And when the first century God offered the gift of God's love again, and when I was in the first century, I recognised that offer and I became the first person, but not the only person, to accept that offer. What did you recognise? I recognised that God had a personal love for us and that God wanted us to feel this love, but we had to open up emotionally in order to feel the love. So what I realised was that it wasn't an intellectual process. It was an emotional process that I had to go through. Does that make sense? Mm. Love is an emotion, and as such, it's an emotional process that you need to go through with God in order to receive God's love. And what I recognised is that I had to go through an emotional process and that God wanted me to go through this emotional process. It was just whether I was willing to go through it or not as to whether I would do it. In other words, it was my exercise of my own will that determined whether I would take the offer that God had offered me. See, that to me is very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. But I'm feeling certain other things, mm -hmm. which is conflicting my thought process. Yeah. Perhaps you can firstly tell me why it's difficult to understand, and then we can focus a little bit on the emotions you feel that mm. conflict with your thoughts. <laughs> you need to exercise your free will in order to, to feel, to, to, do any, to take any action. Correct. So you would have had to have your free will exercised to feel this possibility of receiving a love from God. Correct. I had to make that decision myself. Even to recognise it exists. Correct. Yes. I had the fortunate uh, introduction to the earth in the, in the first century in that my parents were open to emotion to a certain degree. And then as soon as I was born, God assisted me through this process by just removing the low self-worth that I had from my parents. And that helped me recognise when God was offering me something. Does that okay, make sense? I understand. And God done that because God had to do it with someone. Like, and and, and I'm, I'm supposing God would have done it with anyone. It just turned out that um, I was open to that process and so I undertook the development that God was offering me at the time. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I could have rejected it just like Amon and Amman did, but, but I chose not to. So the difference with us is... We don't have that opportunity, but... You do have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to exercise, as you say... Your will. Our will. In, in other words, your will to emotionally receive love from God. Mm. And the difference being that I'm referring to is now we're being taught that there is an existence of... Correct. ...that being. In my case, I didn't have anyone to teach me aside from God. Okay. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, it nobody makes else sense. had received it, so nobody else could teach me about it. Mm -hmm. but, but all I had to do is I had to let, go where God led, led me and eventually I learned that it was a possibility. So in my teenage years in the first century, I learned that it was a possibility for me to receive this love and so I asked for it. And when I say I asked for it, I, didn't, I don't mean that I said, please God, give me your love. I had to have a feeling that I wanted God's love developed within my soul, within myself, within my emotions. Now, at the moment, you believe your soul is your spirit body, but that's not the case. Yes. Right? And so you were made up of a spirit body and a soul, or you are, to be more accurate, you are one half of a soul. But this one half of the soul can exercise its will in order to desire emotionally to receive God's love. And that's what I called prayer. So when I referred to prayer, I, I meant that it was an emotional, passionate desire a sincere and pure longing inside of your own heart to receive love from God. Mm. And what I found was that as I received love from God, I started changing. And then I recognised that actually the only way to change beyond the sixth dimension of the spirit world was to actually receive love from God. Unless you have a personal relationship with God, you will not progress beyond the sixth dimension of the spirit world. Mm. And there are many, many people who have proven that. In fact, you are proof of that today. Mm. Does that make sense? It's very logical. Yeah. So God created this way because there were certain things in the universe that you cannot understand with your mind. 
And the only way to understand them is to experience them with your emotions. And there are literally billions of things in the spirit world that you can't understand with your mind, that you can only understand with your emotions. And this is the reason why all the discussions you've had haven't benefited you about the subject. Does that um, make sense? Makes sense. Unless you engage the emotional process, you will not progress beyond your current location. So we're using the incorrect tools. Correct. The means. That's right. So God's offered this beautiful gift of God's love to everyone, but whether you accept it or reject it is very much dependent upon the use of your own will. And you need to use your will to receive or desire to receive God's love. And, and love being an emotion re requires an emotional prompter. It requires an emotional exchange. So if you think of all the things that you express when you're in the sixth dimension, there are times when you express love with each other and they are, aren't they, the most joyful times? It's extremely yeah. exciting. Mm. And then when you go out looking for information or knowledge, many times uh, we do that without really considering love as our first thought. And as a result, that's not quite as joyful generally as having interactions with other people in the sixth dimension that, that are based around love. Mm. And this is how you learnt that love was important. This is how you learnt to develop your own love. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you have developed your own love to the pinnacle of your own creation now, and without God, you cannot develop your love further. And the illustration I have frequently used with other people all the way through the last 2,000 years is this illustration that a water course cannot flow higher than its source. So if the source is the natural human love that comes from inside of a human, then the love that is ever flowing out of that person cannot ever be higher than the pinnacle of the natural love inside of the human. So is that the level of sens emotional sensitivity we have within us? Um, no, it's, uh, the... it's more to do with the amount of love that you have within you that is naturally expressed from you to other people. And to express love does require emotional sensitivity, but it also requires desire for you to love another. It requires, you know, a passion for the other person or for the thing you're loving. It requires a number of things besides just emotional sensitivity. Mm. Yeah. But at some point, the natural love that's inside the human is, reaches a certain point and it can't progress anymore because there's no love that's any higher that can come from another human or another being outside of that human in order for the love to raise to a higher condition. The only way that love can reach beyond the pinnacle of the human development is for love to come from an outside source. And that outside source is God. Okay. And I learnt that this outside source wanted to love me and all, all God wanted was to, for me to be open to receiving this love, but it required that I was allowed myself to be emotionally sensitive. In other words, it required that I allowed myself to feel emotions and release emotions of error or emotions that were unloving from myself by experiencing them and embrace the emotions that were loving from God. So what was the essence of that drove your free will to desire more of that? Well, I, I've always thought this, and this is, um, I feel, a pretty logical thing to think, but I, I realise that not many people historically have ever thought it. But the way I thought was this. I could spend all of my life examining the creation to learn about things, or I could connect directly with the person who created all of those things and find out about them that way. Mm -hmm. and, and I logically thought that it would make more sense to connect with the person who created everything and have that person tell me about everything than it would be to go around having to experiment about everything to discover it all myself. In a way, I believe that, but mm. I guess I was talking to the wrong person. Yeah. So, so uh, if you think about how you've learned up to this point, you've learned by listening to others, right? Mm. And all I'm suggesting is instead of listening to others who can only develop you to a certain point if they have not received God's love, you are better off listening to God because God's your creator. God wants to have a relationship with you. It's just whether you desire the relationship in return. Mm. Now, what's happened is that the spirits who I talked to four or five years ago in your company, they did desire to make that experiment. So they took the chance to take that experiment and run with it. And as a result, they found that they received some of God's love 
and they started understanding new things that they didn't understand before. Okay. And as a result, they progressed to different dimensions where you can't go at the moment. Does that make sense? Yes. And because of their progression and their interest in such progression, their focus came, became more about their development of their relationship with God than it came, became to understand God's creation. And what they found was that because they developed their relationship with God first, all, these other, all the other knowledge got added to them in a much more rapid way because God was telling them through this relationship how everything else worked. Hmm. And that's what I meant in the first century when I said, seek first God's kingdom or seek first God's love and all these other things will be added to you. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so what I'm suggesting to you is that you undertake the same experiments that your friends undertook four years ago. So what did they find in God's kingdom? Well, may I say something at this point? You're going to ask a series of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many questions, I guess. <laughs> and you want to ask those questions because you want to know the answers before you take the experiment. And my suggestion is to do it the other way around now. To do the experiment and then see what happens. You are aware there's, there's many groups where we all meet and we talk about this. Mm -hmm. And... And all of you have what I would classify as fear about undertaking experiments. <laughs> and, log and yet we... You don't call it fear. <laughs> we don't call it fear. We <laughs> you say, unless we can see the positive result of doing it, then there's no point in doing it. But, hmm. but to be frank with you, you've already seen the positive results with the visitors that have come to you just now through, during this conversation. We have. So... so you are seeing the positive results and yet you're still not undertaking the experiment. And so there has to be a reason why. Mm. Does that make sense? Like to, to claim that you've got to see positive results first before you undertake the experiment or logically analyze that there may be positive results and then not undertake the experiment when you have positive results given to you, it means that you're fooling yourself somehow. Um, I'll be truthful. Yeah. I do want some sort of surety. Yes. What, what's the surety you want? What, what is it that you want before you start? I won't be harmed. That you won't be harmed. Why are you worried about being harmed? It's been many, many years since you've ever been harmed. That's why I say I'm being conflicted. Yeah. Because can you see there is still emotions in you? Yes. That you thought were no longer in you. And these things have been coming up quite rapidly. And yes. And the, and the more we discuss this, the more your soul dominates. And there is actually a, te a teaching of God's that talks about soul domination. And what it is, is that no matter how much you develop intellectually, your emotions in your soul will eventually dominate you. And that's not a bad thing. What you need to do is to learn not to act upon emotions that are negative. It just feels, to a degree, like you're out of control in a way. Correct. Um, and God basically is asking you to be out of control for a bit so that God can show you what you can learn when you're out of control. <laughs> so the question is, whose free will is this? Is it me? Or, yes. I don't think I'm exercising that free will, but something else is... This is your soul starting to have an awakening. So you, when you talk about free will, you're talking about my soul exercising. Your soul exercising it. At the moment, you've been thinking you've been exercising free will, but the exercise of your thoughts are not freely thought, in fact. The reality is your soul dominates your thoughts. And what you've been attempting to do is to suppress your thoughts and resist them. Do you understand? And so this is how you've progressed up to now. You've progressed by suppressing negative thoughts. But as you can see, some of these negative feelings still result, revolve and, and are still inside of you. Yeah, no matter what I've done to no suppress No matter what them. you've done to suppress them, they still exist. Mm. Right? You've only been less conscious of their existence. And because you've had more enjoyable experiences, it's been easier for you to be less conscious of the existence of these emotions that are within you. It's just a remarkable feeling when you get to that point where it creeps up on you. It's unexpected. Mm -hmm. and Correct. Yeah. Especially... And this is not a bad thing. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> You're still feeling it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing. I guess it's in me, I don't understand why, but... Well, these are, some of these emotions will be emotions that you've suppressed for all of your life in the spirit world, and also for a lot of your life on earth. Does that make sense? 
See, I, the moment I had the feelings, I had this instant desire to talk to the person who changed everything for, from, yeah. for our teachers. Yes. And, you know, I'm grateful for, 